In this video, we're going to be focusing on machine tool verification for fifth axis table table machine. And in particular, we're going to be looking at what happens when you verify your toolpath and you've got a great toolpath going across some surfaces, but passing through some axes on your fifth axis machine tool. We're going to take a look at what you can do to kind of control the position of that. Whenever you come up with an alert within the Power Mills machine tool verification, that's basically saying it needs a retract and reconfigure. All right, so you'll see here on the screen what we've got going on. We've got our part uh, sitting within a fifth axis vice center of our setup. We've got a clean tool path and what we've programmed with this part, we're looking at this undercut feature here and we've capped a surface across that feature that we're using to machine a basically a projection, a line projection tool path down onto those surfaces and it looks relatively clean. You also see that the tool path calculated gouge free. If I simulate this tool path and we take a look at it, I'll slow it down. This is exactly what we're looking to do. We want to stitch across that surface all the way around the feature of our part in this instance. Everything looks copacetic at this point. And even if we go into a verification, if we look at our colliding sections and take a look at this, we'll get a nice blue check mark within our verification of our toolpath. Everything looks great. But once we actually go to verify this on the machine tool, as we activate our machine tool, and let's go ahead and position our work on our vise. In this case, I'm using a Haas UMC 750 on this work. Right now, the machine tool position is way off. Everything's not actually centered onto the work itself. But I do have a work plane already defined here for the simulation. So we'll go to our machine tool tab and just quickly attach that to the simulation. Everything turns right in the world from the standpoint of the start of the simulation. Let's go ahead and simulate the tool path. Once we get into the simulation of the toolpath, everything looks good. It stitches up to a point, and then we reach a point where the axis tilts further than the machine is capable. So as we look at this toolpath, coming into that, that rotation, it still wants to try to get further past that to machine the rest of the feature. And that's the parent kind of way the toolpath is set up to go through that. What I would want to do is rotate my C axis around and maintain our B positive axis um, along our elevation in order to machine just to one side of the machine tool in this instance. Now there's a trick to this. If I go into my settings, we'll take a look at what the what the trick is and how we can get past this. But one of the inclinations among many users starting out might be to come in and try to use the limitations of the machine tool to do that. Now it is possible to do that in some situations. However, the setup and the uh, limits that happen after you lock the toolpath to the machine tool oftentimes are not worth it. I don't recommend taking that course of action. What I recommend we do is actually calculate this toolpath in a different fashion. Now, this toolpath was set up to calculate in a two-way fashion as we do want a back and forth toolpath and that was a very clean toolpath that we calculated doing this. However, in some situations where you come across controlling an axis at that point, you may need to actually force the calculation to be one way. And that's one of the portions of the trick to controlling the tool axis. We're going to make it two way later using an edit that's going to force it to be two way. But we really want to focus on why this toolpath is trying to reach that point, what we can do to force the B axis in one direction. So if I look at my tool axis page, you know, I'm in lead lean. Naturally, I've set this to a lead lean and to point directly towards a preview frame normal. Well, one of the things that's happening is the machine tool is making a decision to pass through the center line of that axis based off of the surface that it's machining. Now, whenever you're passing through the center line of an axis and the tip of your tool and the center line of your tool is passing through that axis, the algorithm in the toolpath has to make a decision about what direction to go. Now, it's always going to be going towards the direction most uh, logical to machine the surface, which it did just fine. Let's go ahead and calculate our toolpath. Just so you can see the uh, simulation of the center of the toolpath through the center of the, of the part and see how that's not going to logically lock the axis down for us. So if you look at that, now that we've made that one direction, we still have the problem of it continuously traveling through and trying to get to a negative B position that we can't actually reach. Now, the other thing that people do typically when they get into power mills, they try to lock this tool axis, and that can work in some situations. However, that's got to be 
the locked axis and the tool has to maintain reaching the surface or the area that you want to machine. So it's important to note that if I were to lock this at 90 degrees, then this would no longer be able to sweep across that surface the way I'm looking to machine this part. The other axis options that we have is to go into tool axis limits, but you'll notice that when you get into tool axis limits and we preview and draw the tool axis limits, even if we were to say, force a 90 degree elevation on this, it would still only force that to 90 degrees one way or the other. It doesn't actually force the tool path to stay along the B axis as it cuts around our part. If I look to that and say zero at the start of the angle, so that is the equator of our parent work plane here, even if we set this at our G54 plane, that zero plane creates that equator that would stop it at 90 degrees. It could still come over to 90 degrees here. Now, the way that our tool axis limits work, it actually limits within a 3D around that sphere. All right, now the only axis that we have that we can shorten that to if we project this to a single axis is our azimuth angle, the rotation angle, which is used for fourth axis. So a user could actually come through and try to play around with these machine settings quite a bit when the solution is a little bit simpler, however hard to figure out. So let's go in here and let's change this. Let's go ahead and untick our tool axis limits. Let's just tilt this off of the axis about five degrees. And let's go ahead and calculate this tool path. All right, with that tool path calculated, let's definitely go to our tool and turn off the display of the, uh, the tool axis limits there. Now, we have our toolpath. Let's go ahead and simulate this toolpath and just take a look at what it's trying to do now that we've kind of forced the tilt lean direction off onto one side. Let's go ahead and step this through. As it reaches the center point where it needs to make the decision of whether or not to sweep around to the B axis or not, it now decides to rotate around the center because the center of the tool is no longer passing straight through the axis. And once we get past that point, we'll go ahead and rotate around and it's gonna tilt in the B at positive axis, which is the movement that we're actually looking to go through with this solution. You will notice there's some lead in lead out errors in our tool path with the way that the leads and links are set on the calculation of the tool path. That's actually an edit that happened within the tool path afterwards. But now that I have a solution that I want, the key to actually getting this to be a zigzag toolpath across that face is to actually go into our toolpath edit mode in our reorder form. Now I'm gonna go ahead and send this machine tool home to get it up out of the way. I'm going to select the entire toolpath. I'm going to hit this alternate directions button here. And this is going to force any toolpath, even though we set the lean into one direction, to cause a zigzag motion across the part, which then gives us the solution that we're looking for. Now from here, I can actually take out the portion of the toolpath that might be gouging, re-edit the toolpath. You'll also see that with it going back and forth, that also got rid of those leads and links that were passing through the part. But this also solved my problem of the Haas UMC 750 forcing a retract and rewind out of the machine tool verification. I hope this video was helpful and thanks for joining me.